The instrumental use of the history of slavery today also underlies the claim that slavery grew out of racism. For most of its long history, which includes most of the history of the human race, slavery was largely not the enslavement of racially different people, for the simple reason that only in recent centuries has either the technology or the wealth existed to go to another continent to get slaves and transport them en masse across an ocean. People were enslaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. You hear that? Now, you know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the few of you that get mad every single time you see Thomas Sowell on my channel, right? This is something we can learn from. I'm not trying to do this to push anything down your throat or try to get you to drink any Kool-Aid or anything. But this gentleman right here is, an, is a very well-known scholar, and he knows what he's talking about. This comes directly from one of his books that he wrote. And... um it it serve you well if you have an open mind. That's it. People were in and everyone else. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. I just had to cover that. Okay. Sorry for looking all rough. I haven't had a um, haircut in like <laughs> like two and a half weeks. Okay, let's go. Slaved because they were vulnerable, not because of how they looked. The peoples of the Balkans were enslaved by fellow Europeans, as well as by the peoples of the Middle East, for at least six centuries before the first African was brought to the Western Hemisphere. Wow. Before the modern era, by and large, Europeans enslaved other Europeans, Asians enslaved other Asians, Africans enslaved other Africans, and the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere enslaved other indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Slavery was not based on race, much less on theories about race. Only relatively late in history did enslavement across racial lines occur on such a scale as to promote an ideology of racism that outlasted the institution of slavery itself. I'm, I'm so glad that he decided to do this because <laughs> it's opening up so many eyes. I'm, I'm a firm believer that a lot of the people who are watching these videos aren't all fans of Thomas Sowell. But the other people who are not fans of Thomas Sowell, I'm believing that they are objective enough to be able to listen, to hear something out, and to go do their research as well, just in case they have any, um, they, they don't believe what they're hearing. But at the end of the day, I do know that I, Van Hall, after living on this earth for 43 years, never heard the name Thomas Sowell. And I think that's a problem. That is a huge problem because this brother for real, <laughs> the way he move and how smart he is, I'm surprised he wasn't the first black president for real. Wherever a separate people were enslaved, they were disdained or despised, whether they were different by country, religion, caste, race, or tribe. Wow. In East Africa, the Maasai were feared slave raiders, and other African tribes, either alone or in conjunction with Arabs, enslaved their more vulnerable neighbors. As late as 1891, it was reported that Manuema slavers had demoralized surrounding tribes, destroying crops, and famine reigned everywhere. Even in the early 20th century, Abyssinians were still raiding other Africans and carrying off slaves. It was 1922 before the British had gained sufficient control in Tanganyika to stamp out slavery there. Arabs were the leading slave raiders in East Africa, ranging over an area larger than all of Europe. Wow. The total number of slaves exported from East Africa during the 19th century has been estimated to be at least 2 million. Oh my God! <laughs> Jeez, 2 million? 2 million slaves, man. See, I'm just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, man. This is, this is to me the worst. It's okay. Can this even be placed in a box of capitalism at all? Hear me out because I know it's barbaric. I know it's inhumane. I know it's immoral. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, I just want to, I just want to hear from y'all because there's a bunch of people who look at capitalism as a bad thing. And a lot of times it's because of stuff like this that they look at it that way because they're thinking about the most worst of situations where um, products and goods were, um, weren't enough. So people were used as 
products and goods and services. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, I'm talking too much. But if you can answer that, that would be awesome. The only the question is, um, was is was slavery, the slave trade, a form of capitalism? The form in which the story of slavery has reached most people today has been along the lines of the best selling book and widely watched television miniseries Roots by Alex Haley. Oh, okay. Challenged on the historical accuracy of Roots, Haley said I tried to give my people a myth to live by. This instrumental use of history, or purported history, is open to the same objections as other instrumental myth-making. Despite the impression created by Roots, during the era of the massive slave trade from West Africa, a white man was more likely to catch malaria in Africa than to catch slaves himself. Wow, a white man was more likely to catch malaria <laughs> than to catch slaves himself. So he needed help. He needed other people to do the willing and dealing. All I got is a sword and probably a musket whenever they moved on to the next form of, um, you know, military tools. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is me coming off the top of the head. But interested information. I mean, this right here, it, I can see why it has not been spread worldwide. Why? Because... If the narrative changes, the fear leaves. The fear leaves. Without fear, certain people would not be able to flourish. And I think that the fear is necessary. So they want to keep the fear in front of your face at all times. Need for you to constantly remember those things and think of those things so that the person who, the people, the companies, the, the part of the government, I don't know who it is. I'm 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 not one of those type of people that put all put those conspiracy theories out there, whatever. I'm just using my own common sense that people do benefit off of us constantly being held in a box of fear, worry, and ignorance. The average life expectancy of a white man in the interior of sub-Saharan Africa at that time was less than one year. Wow. By and large, men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere came to the coasts of Africa, bought their slaves, and left as soon as possible. Even so, the death rates among the white crews of the ships carrying slaves to the Western Hemisphere were as high as the death rates among the slaves themselves. It was only much later, after quinine and other medical measures enabled Europeans to survive where there were tropical diseases, was it possible for them to invade Africa in force and establish empires there. But by then, the Atlantic slave trade had already been ended. During the era of that trade, Africa was largely ruled by Africans, who established the conditions under which slave sales took place. Wow. The crew of a slave ship was in... So just to be clear, the Africans controlled the slave trade in Africa. The Africans controlled the slave trade in Africa. At least that's what I believe. Now, if I'm wrong, per usual, when y'all correct me in the comments, that's an honor. Believe it or not, that's an honor when you correct me in the, com um, in the comments section because rather than not even viewing the video or just clicking the video and seeing something you don't like and leaving, you decided to participate and add value to my life by giving me information that I didn't have before. And for that, I'm appreciative. Even if, e even if the T come from if, even if the information that you give me is contrary to what, um, to what I'm believing, or you're attacking me in some type of way, because I'm, I done made some idiotic comment. You still commented, you still gave me some information. That I appreciate. Conditions under which slave sales took place. The crew of a slave ship was in no position to defy African rulers oh, and their armies sheesh. by going out across the land and capturing people willy-nilly. The stronger African peoples captured and enslaved the weaker peoples. The same pattern found over the centuries in Europe, Asia, the Western Hemisphere, and Polynesia. In the Asa land, the Ngoni and Yao swaggered over and terrorized other tribes. In Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors. It's almost like every single time there's a business idea that's making a lot of money or is, or is providing 
a, a, a great living or some sort of um, benefits or agricultural, um, structural um, building or something like that. If it's happening and it's positive to someone or to a, a company or to um, an organization, something like that, um, other co countries start to follow suit. Oh, that works over there? I'm going to do it. Oh, that works over there? I'm going to do it. It's the same thing with you looking at the internet right now. You're looking at YouTube, right? How often do you see a video now? And, and I'm talking about in comparison to, say, last year. Because you guys have been watching reactions for a while. But I have a question. How often now are you seeing Thomas Sowell reactions versus last year? You're seeing it because it's helping someone else's channel. So you're seeing other people start to check it out as well. And their channels are starting to grow. Now, some people are checking out Thomas Soul because they have a genuine um, um, desire to, to learn something from Thomas Soul. And then you have some people who are just opportunists who are saying, whoa, Thomas Soul's name is huge. I'm going to react to some of Thomas Soul's things and, um, and grow my following the same way other people are doing it. And that's something that seems to have been happening when it when it came down to um, the slave trade one country would do something it works another country does something that works I'm, I'm believing it started somewhere I, I, it, it's, it, well he already mentioned where it started and I'm doing all this daggone talking where I can't even remember but I'm going back and just be quiet but it's just funny how different things are happening all over the world and whether good bad or or indifferent you know what I mean it's it, it creates a trend that takes over and, and just runs itself. And either way is a horrid situation. It's sad. It's sickening. It's sad to see. Even though I'm learning the truth, it's extremely sad to see. Because only the strong survives. You hear that from everybody. You hear that from hip hop. You hear that from um, people who, I don't know, many people who have a voice and they, and they speak up about real life in, in the country, in the world. And they point out those things that only the, only the strong survive. It's survival of the fittest. And then you have in all these countries, the fittest, the strongest, taking over the weakest and the weakest don't have to be lack of muscle. It could be lack of resources. It could be lack of money, lack of people. Like it's only two of you, but guess what? It's 30 of us. You're now working for us for free as our slave. I apologize if I'm talking too much guys, this, this situation right here hits me in a different type of place. Okay. Other tribes in Uganda, the Baganda made life miserable for their neighbors and the Nioro and Hima of Anko enslaved Toro women and children. The Tutsi dominated the Hutu in Rwanda, wow. the Maasai lorded it over the Kikuyu and Kamba, and the latter, in turn, held the Indorobo in a kind of serfdom. This brother did his research. It was precisely the fact <laughs> that Europeans, research. except for the Portuguese, seldom participated in the raids that captured and enslaved Africans that enabled most people in Europe and the Americas to remain oblivious to the traumatic experience that this was, with some Africans committing suicide to avoid capture and wives being whipped as they tried to cling to their husbands or children. Historian David Brian Davis pointed out that Europeans had little contact with the actual process of enslavement, and that as late as 1721, the Royal African Company asked its agents to investigate the modes of enslavement in the interior. Europeans typically saw only the end results, enslaved people being offered for sale on the coast. It was much the same story in the Ottoman Empire, where those who bought slaves had no idea what these slaves had been through before. Wow. The unique position of the Western world in the history, and especially the destruction of slavery, need not imply that there was unanimity within the West on this institution. In addition to whites who defended the enslavement of Africans on racial grounds, or who opposed general emancipation on social grounds, 
There were many whites, and even blacks, who defended slavery as a matter of self-interest as slave owners. Now, y'all hear that? <laughs> y'all hear that? There was people on both sides. Some were defending it, some were, were against it. Some were benefiting, and they was like, oh, nah, this is good. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I mean, people are building a nation for us, and, you know, the Bible, the Bible, because, ha, <laughs> huh, um, a lot of people were able to support their, um, um, their having slaves and whatnot by actual scripture. And the Lord actually has said some things about you got to listen to your slave owner. Slaves, listen to your slave owner. That's in the Bible. I don't know what scripture it is. If y'all can tell me, do you know what scripture that is? If you can, just add it to the, the comments, please. Because, and I don't want to harp on that. I don't want to stay on that. That's not where I want to park at all. I don't even want to stress that I'm not saying that the Bible is bad. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying this goes so far back that it's covered in the bible that's it that's it and as he just now said slavery had no color <laughs> it was just people that was the strongest against the weak taking over and realizing everything that they can get from that and they used it until they couldn't use it anymore and it was black people taking up for slavery hoping that it would stay going the way that it was because they was benefiting in some way they were benefiting in some way. There was white people too. They were benefiting in some way. They were benefiting. Jeez, man, this is heavy. Although most black owners of slaves in the United States were only nominal owners of members of their own families, there were thousands of other blacks in the antebellum South who were commercial slave owners, wow. just like their white counterparts. An estimated one-third of the free persons of color in New Orleans were slave owners, and thousands of these slave owners volunteered to fight for the Confederacy during the Civil War. Black slave owners were even more common in the Caribbean. Wow. In short, there were many defenders of slavery in the West, even in the 19th century. And outside the West, slavery was too widely accepted to require defense. You know what? People need to hear that about the the many black slave owners in the Caribbean. All of my friends and relatives who love going on vacations, <laughs> thinking that these islands are much better than the country that they're living in right now. <laughs> I'm going to go there. I wish I could move there, but I can only stay there for like a week or, or two weeks. And that's something I want to talk to y'all about too someday. Someday, because I think it's imper I think I think it's important that we consider how how elitist that looks when we just go to some we just go to some country and we go to the nicest part of that country for a week five days they're all inclusive spots just to kick our feet up and put our hair down jump in their clear water and then we come back home for the hustle and bustle it's, it's, it's really elitist when we do that, but we don't consider those things. And then some of us like to go off of the resort for the good weed, the good drinks. They might be selling some white Hennessy that we can bring back over to the country. Yeah, we do that a lot. We do that a heck of a lot. Some of us get in trouble in some countries because some countries don't play that mess at all. They'll see that one bottle of white Hennessy and guess what? You'll be in jail in that country but it's just funny that he said that in the caribbean it was more black slave owners that's good information no other nation ended slavery in the same way as the united states did and few ended it after so short a struggle as history is measured how and why did slavery end in most of the world there were two major processes over the centuries, as more and more territories around the world consolidated into nation-states with their own armies and navies, raiding those territories to capture and enslave the people who lived within them became more hazardous in itself and also risked military retaliation against the countries from which the raiders came. Wow. Thus, more and more peoples became off-limits to slave raiders over time. 
Put differently, the areas which remained subject to slave raiding over the centuries were primarily those where the people lived in smaller or weaker societies. Such societies continued to exist where it was difficult, for geographic or other reasons, to consolidate large areas under one government. This was true of the Balkans, the backwaters of Asia, and much of sub-Saharan Africa. By the early modern era, sub-Saharan Africa, with its numerous and severe geographic handicaps, was one of the last remaining areas from which vast numbers of people could be enslaved. Wow. Um, thank you to Thomas Soul TV um, channel for posting this. I really appreciate it. Um, and shout out to all of their Patreons who made that possible for them to be able to post these type of videos for us, for our education, and just so we just just have conversations i'm mean, healthy conversations that will in the end make us all better but per usual i want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below if you have yet to hit that subscribe button please make sure you do so on your way out the door once again guys i'm van and now we are all the lfr family i look forward to seeing you on the next video hopefully inside of the patreon as well y'all have an amazing man love y'all